Hey guys, Wet Movie One back here again for yet another year of Dragon Fest. I'm out here in Glendale, California at the Glendale Civic Auditorium for Dragon Fest 2023. I was about to head on in there, see the guests, see some of the cosplays, people dressed up in there, and there's also going to be an auction and a whole bunch of other cool things, so come along with me. And for you guys who don't know, Dragon Fest uh, is a fundraiser to help the Martial Art History Museum uh, you know, get to move to their next location. So we're heading on to the doors now. You, everyone must have a ticket and or a wristband uh, to get on in. Just got to the convention floor. A lot of things going on in here. People are lined up for certain things. And let's walk around and see what we see. All right, guys, I am now with the boss man himself, Fred the Hammer Williamson, up in the house right now. How are you doing today? It's hammer time, all the time. Yeah, it is. May I ask you a question, though? Yeah, when it comes to all the movies you've done, what would you say is the most craziest one you've ever did that you wish more people saw? Well, that's two, that's two different separate questions. Crazy and hope they all saw. Or like a movie that you worked really hard on that you, you, want, you wish people, more people saw it. I don't have that problem. I don't yeah? have that problem because it's self-satisfaction for me when I do a film and I'm completed. It's, 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 it's what I think about my performance and what I think about the film is not what anybody else thinks. Uh, I, don't, I don't live that way. I work on my own motivation. What, what, what would you say is the most um, impactful uh, moment you ever had on set with like maybe like an actor or just like an experience you, you had? I was riding a horse going about 25 miles an hour and it, it bucked me off and kicked me and I got up and ran and caught it and jumped on it and kept going. What movie was that? I ain't telling you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but man, I just gotta say, it's always a pleasure to see you, yeah. you know, at Dragon Fest every year. You just your, your face lights up the room, and uh, if you don't come down to Dragon Fest, you might lay down the hammer. One never knows what might happen when you get here. That is super cool. The first person you see when you walk into Dragon Fest is good old Hammer, right over there. Right now, they're holding an auction for a piece that's signed by Joe Mantegna. Anybody wants and, two thirty? And Joe Mantegna is up there on stage right now. They're okay, auctioning we're off. Hold it, two twenty once. Anybody? Anybody? Two twenty twice. Sold to the man of proper two hundred twenty dollars. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Very smart individual. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great Joe Montagna. And for you guys that remember, uh, a couple months ago I donated an autographed photograph. Okay guys, inside the museum right now with Michael Matsuda, the founder of the museum. And there was something I wanted to give to you, an autographed uh, picture from the uh, Enter the Dragon, uh, signed by Bolo that I got earlier today. Oh, wonderful, look at that. Of uh, Bolo Young from Enter the Dragon. And they're about to auction it off on stage. Let's go check it out, see what it goes for. So I'm on stage right now at Dragon Fest, and they're auctioning off my, my Bolo Yen. $100 once, $100 twice, $100 and $10, right here. Who would go $120? $120. $120. Who would go $130? $120 once, $120 twice. Sold, $120, a beautiful man right there. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. But one of the cool things about Dragon Fest is that they have seminars as well, that you can take classes with some of the actors and celebrities and martial artists uh, that are at this convention today, like Benny the Jet Ukides. It's a fake right but means shoulders step in and shoot. Give and take, back and forth, let's go. You decide who's going first. The master Benny the Jet, man. Did, did movies with Jackie Chan, a whole bunch of other really cool people up in the house right now, teaching people the martial arts. I'm with my old martial art teacher from when I was a kid. We got Benny the Jet over here, Benny Jet Ukides. How are we doing today, my man? Yeah, if it gets any better than this, it gets scary. I know, right? But si since this is Dragon Fest, and it's about the martial arts and some, some about martial art movies, what would you say is, is your top two favorite martial art movies of all time? Not necessarily that you're in, this of all time. 
But you know what? It was very hard because there were so many martial art movies. Plus, I have a lot of friends doing, doing movies here. And so, to really say two, you know, it was very hard because, again, the martial arts movies right now of today, they're, they're action, but the problem is, it's always about, you know, hurting somebody, stopping somebody, killing somebody. And just to me, the art is about defending. And sometimes, whether it be defending mentally, physically, spiritually, defending. And so the, the movies are today, and the formula is about killing, robbing, yeah. raping, you know, and uh, we need more clean action movies yeah. in the art. Just very clean, not, not about so much, uh, even though it is about defending, but it's too much, there's too much bloodshed in these as far movies. as I'm concerned. And another person that's going to be uh, having a seminar today, just like last year, Don the Dragon Wilson. So anyway, listen, we're not, we're not given a choice to teach whatever I want, because a lot of times I travel around the world, they tell me what they want me to teach. Teach us how you can, teach us how you get in shape for fights, whatever. Well, when I'm given a choice, I teach self-defense. Because really, that, that's what martial arts is. It's not a sport. I was a kickboxing champion, but I'm not a kickboxer. I'm a Kung Fu style traditional martial artist. And um, martial arts was designed for self-defense. Yes. Right, if somebody wants to hit you, when you do this, no, no, keep your eye off me. Always, Bruce Lee said the air of the dragon. Never take your eye off your opponent. Right, you're, you're right on me, right. Because anything you see would not knock you out. It's like when you see this, and then that lands, that's how people get knocked out. Your chin, from your chin right to my chin. That's the shortest distance. It's not from down here, it's right here. Boom, all you gotta do is this. And I'm, I'm, I'm out. Boom, right there, right there. That's it. Check out some of the cool stuff they have over here at Dragon Fest. You can buy some weapons, of course, you know, toy, toy ones, fun toy stuff. They even have some DVDs back here, big long swords and everything like that. Did I just buy a sword? I think I did. I think, I think I did. Still at Dragon Fest. I got my sword. What's going on? Back up. Hey, Carl. You're not supposed to be here, Mr. Sterling. Hey. You're not supposed to be here, sir. Hey, you don't want to mess with my sword. Hey, what are you doing? Are you, aren't you trying? You said it was fake, but why, how do I know it's fake? Hey, listen. Are you trying to make good movies? What are you doing? I know. I hey, back up, David. Back up. Dave Sterling. Sterling Entertainment. Shut up. Alright guys, I'm with Sean Cannon right now, the karate bad boy himself. What's going on my brother? How are you man? Pretty good. Uh, how are you enjoying yourself over here at uh, Dragon Fest? You know, I've been having a great time. It's it's not only fun to meet a lot of the fans, but it's so great to see, you know, there's martial arts legends here, people that I've seen throughout my life and, and to have the opportunity to get to know some of them personally. It's a great day. That's a super rad dude. So, how long have you been into the martial arts? Probably since I was about 15. Yeah? What was it that got you into it? You know, I actually started boxing and my parents decided that the gym I was boxing in was one of those gyms that these guys were doing it to get out of a really bad socioeconomic situation. So they said, what do you think about taking karate? I didn't even really want to do it. And once I said foot in the dojo, I was hooked. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I started Shotokan when I was about 15. Uh, later, our dojo went under the umbrella of uh, Sensei Demaru's dojo when it became a Tosokai and Genbukai. And I've managed to, uh, you know, always kind of have my, my foot in one martial art or another. I like to always joke that I could probably get my ass kicked in five different martial arts. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you can answer this question or not, because the whole strike and everything that's going on. Yeah. But is there a favorite martial art movie, maybe like top two that you have, that you, that, that you just absolutely love? Well, I mean, obviously, Karate Kid, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I, I love Bloodsport when it came out. Um, best of the best. Yeah. Um, Billy Jack. Was, uh, I was a big fan of Billy Jack. Yeah. But do you have a website people can find you on? Yes. You can find me at seancannon.actor or on Instagram at sean.cannon. Make sure you guys check them out and show them some love and support. Or your karate's a joke. A big crowd of people right now uh, at Dragon Fest watching the different panels that are going on, but, you know, actually different demonstrations uh, going on. 
Still over here at Dragon Fest with my homeboy Alan. Also, my ride today. Uh, he pulled through last minute like a cool, like a cool, super cool, good guy that he is. But bro, what kind of cool people have you met so far? Um, yeah, I met uh, Richard Norton. He was in Jim Cotta and the Octagon with Chuck Norris. Yeah, yeah. Also met um, Michael J. White. Got his autograph from Spawn and stuff. Spawn, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, got, you got Don Wilson's DVDs in there? Got his DVDs, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. The Martial Arts Kids Square has Cynthia Rothrock and Don Wilson in there. Oh, wow. Yeah, I haven't seen those yet, but I'm going yeah. to watch that. I am now with the queen herself, Miss Cynthia Rothrock, right now. She's here at Dragon Fest promoting a new movie. And you want to tell the people what it's about? Yeah, um, it's my movie. It's called Black Creek. And after doing 70 films for other people, I decided to do my own film. And uh, I wanted to do a Western. I wanted to be dark and gritty. But the unique thing about it is I wanted to incorporate a lot of martial arts. So I have a lot of my friends in this film. It's almost like the movie of who's who in martial arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be shooting it this October uh, in Benson, Arizona. That's super cool. Cause you got different, a whole bunch of different people like Don the Dragon Wilson, uh, Benny Ukides. You got like a whole bunch of legendary actors, which I think is rad. And uh, are you nervous? I'm very nervous about yeah, like making, yeah. making your first movie because you've been in yes. you've been in tons. So like, what, what are you doing to try to prepare yourself? It's like it's hard putting everything together. You know, it's not easy because it's like I want this. Uh, to be the best it could be because it is my film, my first film, so I want the lighting to be good. The costuming is going to be different, not like just something that's off the rack, you know. I'm um, bringing in stunt coordinators from Switzerland and Germany because uh, I just love the way they fight, so I want to bring them in for that. Um, mm -hmm. So being in the business so long, you made friends with all these different people, so it's kind of cool that they're coming along to help you out with your first feature film. So when it comes to martial arts, though, what was it that got you into the business and like, you know, that made you go, this is what I want to do? Well, um, into the movie business, it kind of came by uh, just, I, I think, just like a blessing. Like, I think it's God preparing me for the path that he wanted me to go on. And I never had aspirations to be in movies. When I was little, I used to watch Jackie Chan movies. And I used to go home and practice all the movements that I saw him do that I was like just blown away by. And one day I was on the West Coast demonstration team and the editor of Inside Kung Fu Magazine said, hey, uh, Ernie, we want you to bring the guys down because Corey Yu, mm -hmm. who's famous, Hong Kong director, famous now in America, uh, was looking for a guy. They were looking for the next Bruce Lee. And Ernie said, well, should we bring the girls? And he goes, yeah, yeah, but they're really looking for a guy. So we went down. Um, he said, I did some form. I did weapons, self-defense techniques. I did some free sparring. And Corey Wien says, I want the girl. So I went to Hong Kong 1985, did my first film with Michelle Yeoh and, uh, called Yes, Madam. And I thought I would just do one movie, that it was going to be an experience. Oh, wow. You know, in my mind, I was thinking, someday I'll have kids. And I could say, your mom was in a movie. But that movie was so successful that I got a contract with Golden Harvest, and then everything just was history. Still, you know, uh, whatever what it is, 30, 35 years later, still doing movies. You, she does have, still have a campaign up right now, still raising some extra funds for uh, Black Creek that she's making. And uh, where, where can people find that out? Yes, uh, we still have an Indiegogo campaign. We have great incentives. We have one left where you can actually fight one of the action stars in the movie. Um, we have VIP day on set, all the way to a shout out on Facebook. Just, uh, you know, all your support helps. We just uh, want to make this the best movie possible. So up until we start, we're probably going to continue to raise funds because the more we make, the more horses we can add into the scene. You know? Yeah, so, and the better it will be. The better it will be. And that's what it's all about. It's trying to bring you a great martial art movie. And it's kind of like something that I look at it this way. Would I want to see this film? Mm -hmm. Then if I do, I think it really is. <laughs> so guys, check it out. I'll have a link for it down below. I'll have a link for her Instagram and stuff as well. Give her a follow. Let her know I sent you. But Cynthia, thank you so much for giving me the couple moments of your time. And Absolutely. I really do appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Hey, nerds. 
Are you guys gonna go in there and learn the martial arts, or are we, are we both? Are we all just gonna be uh, little wieners? No, I'm gonna stay here and man the table since I'm the only one here. So that means you've got to go in there and learn your learn, kung fu. Learn, learn. I teach. I don't learn. You I so teach. so show show us some moves, David. Yeah. Show us some martial art moves, David. Come on. Yeah, I, I, you, show us a kick. Bucks. I got secret moves. There's secret moves. Oh, the secret moves with the ladies, right? Yeah. Yeah. But we're over here at this, at this my boy's table. It has a whole bunch of cool like DVDs and Blu-rays. Five Deadly Venoms uh, up in the house. Deadly Duo. Sister Street Fighter. Some cool stuff, man. Even the Suspiria 4K. Uh, up in the house over here, still book of Last House uh, on the left. I, th I don't know if this one's out of print or not anymore. It, it could be, but man, even the Maximum Overdrive. They have some really cool DVDs and Blu-rays. Okay, guys, I'm at another cool booth over here with some of my buddies that I always see at Dragon Fest. But you're still working on something that you just finished. Just finished it, Doc yeah. Savage. Doc Savage. So hey, what, what, what can you tell people about it? Well, Doc Savage, of course, is a 1930s Pulp Fiction character that became a, a number of comic books, and they did a movie in the 1970s with Ron Elliott who played Tarzan. So we're doing a brand new streaming series, which is inspired by that original character. Uh -huh. It's going to be coming out later this year, early 2024. We are filming in Fresno, so it's uh, with Valleywood Entertainment, and we're partnered with CMAC, the Community Media Access Collaborative in Fresno, California. Okay. So brand new series coming out. Uh, the main villain is played by Americus Abasamas. Oh, that's um, cool. Sumo champion and actor in Boba Fett and Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay. So it's gonna be a lot of fun um, coming out soon. We're actually still in that early stage. We're still developing it. We've shot the first three episodes, but we have a number of episodes still to go. So we currently have an Indiegogo campaign going on. So if you go to our website, DocSavage.com, that's Doc with a K, and it's Savage with a U. Mm -hmm. If you go to that website, you can click on the link right to the Indiegogo campaign. If you make a contribution, we've got keychain shirts, we've got all kinds of cool things, including action figures oh, as gift okay. items. Yeah, yeah, like this, so, is, this is kind of stuff that you they can get yes. for uh, becoming a, yes. a supporter. Exactly. Yes. That's super cool. Can you, there's even some like old comics you guys have here. Exactly. Yes. And that, that, that's the that's what the, the character is based on, right? Precisely. Yes. yes. That's it's super a super popular character. There's actually a lot of fan clubs out there that love this character, even though there hasn't been anything new since the 1970s. So we're going to be doing, actually, it's only the second time anybody can see a live-action version of Doc Savage. That's super cool. I'm sure my buddy here is going to send me a link so I can like, link you guys to the Indiegogo down below. Sure. Right. Make sure you guys check it out, show us some support. The things you see at Dragon Fest. How are you doing, Dark Lord? Excellent. Excellent. Whoa. Bro, I think you're at the wrong convention, but welcome. I am always at the right convention. Just try not to hurt anybody, okay? Okay. There you go. Whoa. We got the main man that started Dragon Fest right here. Gerald Okamura in the house with a lightsaber. Sir, are you trained in that kind of weapon? I don't speak when I take a picture. Oh. Oh. I just saw you a second ago wielding a lightsaber. Are you trained in the, the dark arts? Yes, I am. In fact, it was my idea to have the, the swords illuminate. Oh. No, that was my idea. Now, I don't care what other people say. I'm telling you I'm good, straight you. from the horse's mouth. I love it challenge. was my idea. So, people know your face. You've been around in the movie business for a long time. The first movie I ever saw you in that I remember is The Power Within, one of my favorites. What would you say is your most, I would say, stand outish movie and a movie that you did that you wish more people saw or knew about? You know, that kind of question has many answers only because of the different type of movie. No, I can say Big Trouble was the, was one. I can say uh, Blade was another one. I can say, well, I work with Brandon Lee, so Showdown in Little Tokyo might be one. Then I can also say I work on a Andy Sedaris movie with Centerfold, 
Playboy Centerfold, uh, Penthouse, all these beautiful women, you know, so, so th th that kind of question kind of have a whole lot of different answers yeah. for different reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, so, one that comes to mind would be Ninja Academy, you know. Uh, now, if we had shot it today, they, they wouldn't have to put any dye in my beard, because now it's already white. Mm -hmm. It was black back then. And we also have Philip and Simon Ree from Best of the Best over here signing autographs and uh, meeting fans and also ho holding like a little private signing, which I think is kind of cool. Take care. different kind of weapons and things you can buy over here like it looks like handmade kind of stuff uh, at Dragon Fest kind of cool uh, I, I shouldn't mess with anything like this like this looks like a like a crazy kind of slingshot or something you can like you know take in like maybe hit someone way over there but uh yeah I my dumbass should not mess with things like this Well, guys, I'm with Hollywood George right now. Hollywood, uh, Hollywood. Yeah, over here at Dragon Fest. Bro, yeah. you're over here rocking the Cobra Kai. Yeah, Cobra Kai. You no getting, did you get any autographs so far? Oh, yeah, I got a lot. I got a ton. I got um, Michelangelo, Nick Palma. I got the Cobra Kai Karate Kid people. I got Ron Thomas. Yeah. And I got, um, shoot, what's his name? Mike got, Barnes. Yeah, lot, 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 yeah, Mike Barnes. That's super cool. Yeah, Sean So, so if, people, if you want to see what you got autographed, they're going to watch your video? Yeah. They gotta watch. Yeah, check out Hollywood George on YouTube, man. Yeah. I have a link for it down below. Thank you. Brandon's a good guy. Guys, subscribe. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. We also have Richard Norton uh, in the house right here from said movies as uh, Force 5 and The Octagon, the one I remember right there. A lot of cool stuff, dude. Of course, Rage of Honor 2 is in the house today. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. You know, it's been very, I haven't done a Dragon Fest in probably 20 years since Gerald Okamura used to do it. But uh, I put my flight off after meeting Michael. Yeah. You know, we went to see Benny the Jet and Michael said, oh, you need to come to Dragon Fest. So my wife and I changed the flights. And here we are. So it's great because I'm getting a chance to catch up with so many old friends. And you work with Cynthia Rothrock, who's right over here, by the way. Do you have any memories or any stories you can tell us about working with her? Uh, no, we, we were once described as the Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire of martial art movies. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. But we did like eight movies together. First met in Hong Kong, and we just had a great history in, in film. She did give me eight stitches in my eye. When we did Magic Crystal, I got hit in the head with a sword because we'd been filming for 16 hours. So after hospital, I put eight stitches in my eye down here, back on the set within an hour and off we go again. So. Oh, so, so you are you are those tough guys that this tough Yeah, have to be. Hong Kong, they don't, they don't care, you know, on with the job. So when, when it comes to martial arts, what got you into the movie business, into the acting? Uh, just by accident. When I say accident, you know, uh, my partner and I brought Chuck Norris out to Australia in 1978. And we became really good friends. A year later, I ended up in California because I used to do personal bodyguard work. So I ended up calling Chuck and started training with him. He was getting ready to do The Octagon, one of his earliest movies. And the rest is history. It started a whole movie career that's still going today. And here's an overview since the convention is breaking down right now. Everything is being torn down. People are starting to go home. I think it's about time for me to go too. But not before I talk to one special person. The founder of the Martial Art History Museum and the now guy that's running the Dragon Fest. How you doing today, Michael? Oh, good, good. A little tired, but what a great event that was. As you can see, we're winding down, cleaning it up, but it was a fantastic time. Everybody came back. It was probably the most successful Dragon Fest ever. Yeah. So I was very thrilled about it. We did a lot of great stuff here, and 
and people are going to talk about this for many, many, you know, a long time. But most of all, we raised some good funds for the Martial Arts History Museum. And that's what Dragon Fest is all about, raising funds and supporting the museum. So if people, the people that couldn't make it out here, how, how could they support the museum if they want to keep the martial arts alive for people that are, like, overseas somewhere? Oh, they can go to our website at mamuseum.com, mamuseum.com, and go there and make a donation, help out the museum. You know, we're doing our best to relocate the museum to a larger facility. That way we can do a lot more stuff and keep that history alive. So people can come on, make a donation. You know, people enjoy martial arts, they love museums, and they love all of this. Let's give a little bit back by supporting the museum. Yeah, definitely check it out, guys. I'll have a link for that down below. Thank you, uh, Master Matsuda, for always uh, being so kind to me. I really do appreciate it. Ah, oh, thank you, Brandon. And I'll see you later. Okay. Well, guys, back home right now from Dragon Fest was a long, fun-filled day. But I did get a whole lot of autographs, a whole lot of pickups uh, at this convention. But this video is already over 25 minutes long. So come back in the next couple days to see all the cool stuff I got signed at Dragon Fest. But also check out all the links that I have down below to the mamuseum.com if you guys want to show your support. Even if it's a dollar, five dollars, help support the Martial Arts History Museum. Michael Matsuda is one of the coolest guys on the planet uh, that runs the Martial Arts History Museum out there in Burbank, California. Please show them some love and support. I have all the other links and stuff of other, other Indiegogo campaigns and things like that that were talked about in this video. But come back in a couple days and I'll show you guys all the cool stuff I got at Dragon Fest in the haul video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next one.